Hi there, it's me, India. Welcome back to our series, Don't Worry About It. Do you like lemons? I mean, do you like to eat lemons? A lot of people don't. You know why? Because lemons are so sour. Ugh. Lemons are definitely sour, but they are a key ingredient to something I like. Lemonade, do you like lemonade? On a hot summer day, when the sun is blazing down on you, you can get really uncomfortable and overheated. When that happens, there's nothing like a tall glass of lemonade to cool you down. Lemonade is cool and refreshing. Lemons are sour and not so refreshing. But have you ever heard the saying, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade? That's exactly what God does with the hard times in our life. It's true. The Bible teaches us in Psalm 126, 5, those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. I know, I know. You may be wondering, what does that even mean? It means even though we have difficult days that bring worry and anxiety, God can turn our sadness into joy. In your lesson today, you're going to learn all about how God can turn your hard times into something to celebrate. I know it sounds impossible, but it's possible with Jesus. Through the story of the prodigal son, you're going to learn about a truly sad situation that turned into a joyous celebration. Well, until next time, I'm India reminding you, don't worry about it. See ya! What you gotta know, what you gotta know, time for Boudreau, what you gotta know, what you gotta know. Boudreaux, that's pronounced boo and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning how that God can turn our sadness into joy. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. Even in my hard times, God can bring me joy. I'm gonna tell you right now, in this life, you're gonna have hard times. Oh no, you mean our watches and our clocks are gonna be all stiff and crusty. I hate hard times. Come on, man. You know that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the difficult things happening in your life. It ain't gonna last forever because God's gonna turn your sadness into joy. I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. That's right. No matter what you're facing, Jesus will bring you joy. So every time today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. Even in my hard times, God can bring me joy. And that right there is what you gotta know. Well, I'm Boo Joe over to buy you saying bye bye you. Well, today's Bible story is found in the book of Luke chapter 15. And it's a story that Jesus told to help people understand how much God loves them. So, there was a father who had two sons. Now, one of his sons was the youngest son, and he approached his father one day, and he told him, give me my share of the inheritance. He had decided that he would be better off on his own. He said that he didn't want any rules, no boundaries, no bedtimes, no chores. Now, do you think that would be an awesome life? Well... He thought it would have been an awesome life, too. He thought he was going to have so much fun and there weren't going to be any worries. So the father gave the son what he asked for. And the son left the house and he went out to live on his own. But soon he started partying and drinking and living a sinful lifestyle. He thought he had lots of friends, but really his friends only hung out with him because he had lots of money. And unfortunately, it wasn't long before the boy had wasted all of his money on wild and sinful living. He ended up with no money. And so he had no money to buy food, and he had to get a job feeding pigs. Everybody say, ew. Yeah, can you imagine sloshing around with pigs all day in the mud? That would be so gross. But that's what happened, and it ended up being the worst job ever. And the son looked around at his situation, and he could not believe what he had gotten himself into. He realized that the pigs were living better than him. And so 
he said to himself, my father's servants live better than this. I will return home and beg for forgiveness. And so maybe my father will take me back as a hired servant. And I imagine that he thought his father was going to be mad. Like he was going to get home and he was going to get like immediately grounded and he was going to get this really long lecture. But do you think that's what happened? No, that's not what happens at all. In fact, while the boy was away, the father was so sad. He would look out at the road every day and he would wish that he would see his son walking down that road to come home again one day. And you know what? It finally happened. The son decided to come home and beg for forgiveness. And as he approached his father's house, what do you think the father did? Do you think the father was like, ugh, gross? Or do you think he was excited? He was so excited. You know what? He ran down that road and he hugged his son and he kissed him. And they had the biggest celebration ever. The father said, my son was lost, but now he is found. This story is a great reminder that like the father was son, that like the father was sad for a time we will experience sadness in life however like the father's sadness was turned into joy when he found his son the same will happen with us when we do go through sadness and hard times we can trust that god will turn our sadness into joy and we're going to learn way more about this today in our lesson <laughs> It's your old buddy Kent. Kent, hear ya. I'm 921 years old, so I'm just a little bit hard of hearing. <laughs> I need you to help me today, but before I get to that, I'm going to teach you today's power verse. Today's power verse says, Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Psalm 126.5 Well, that was a wonderful power verse, wasn't it? i tell you what I need you to do. I need you to help me say it. So I want you to stand up. There you go, stand up. And you're gonna say it with me loud. Remember, I'm hard of hearing. Say it with me loud so we can get my loudometer all the way up to 10. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Psalm 126.5. Oh, that was pretty good. It was pretty good, but I still can't hear you. <laughs> get it? I want you to do it again, and this time we're going to get the loudometer all the way to 10. Say it loud. Here we go. One, two, three. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Psalm 126.5. Great job on the power verse. You may have a seat. Well, I tell you what, I've got to go pick up my nephew, Barry, from his karate lesson. Or was it grad school? I'm really not sure. But I'm going to have to leave. So until next time, I can't hear you, but I'll see you later. <laughs> Well, boys and girls, it is time for us to get into today's lesson, and I am super, super excited about it because today we're learning about something very, very important. So I want to make sure everyone's paying super close attention in here and even at home. I want you to be completely undistracted. So make sure you are sitting up straight wherever you are. Your hands should be empty. Let me see your empty hands. Empty, 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 empty. I think I see someone holding a Pop-Tart online. Yeah, no, you can finish your Pop-Tart. That's fine. But empty hands, empty hands. Put them together. Put them in your lap. Leave them right there. Leave your face mask right where it is. And you should also have eyes that are wide open looking right up here at me. Ears that are open listening to every single word I say. And even though I can't see it, your mouth should be closed so that you can listen closely. Now, have you ever had a bad day? Anyone ever had a bad day? Now, hold on, because I'm not talking about a kind of bad day. I'm not even talking about a pretty bad day. No, I'm talking about a really, really, really 
bad day. Have you ever had one of those? Maybe your bad day went something like this. You woke up, and you were so excited because it was Saturday morning. You were going to spend the day resting and relaxing, hanging out, playing video games, going outside, riding your bike. You are going to have the best time. And then your mom said, all right, it's time to get ready for school. And you found out it was actually Monday. Oh, man. And then when you went to eat breakfast before school, you got in there and you realized that your favorite cereal box was empty. And you had to eat your grandma's favorite. And it's called something like uh, crusty, weedy, oat bran or something gross. Yeah, it's terrible. Nobody wants that. And then, so you eat that crunchy old nasty cereal that your grandma likes. And you finally get to school and you realize you forgot your homework that you worked all night on the night before and you left it at home and now you're going to get an F. Oh, it's so terrible. And so then finally you go on, you move on, you go to lunch and you know what's for lunch? Meatloaf and broccoli. Oh, gross. And the meatloaf has onions in it. Oh, I don't like that. That's terrible. Oh, yeah, it's awful and so sad. And then finally, after a long day of boring school, you get home. And guess what? You have to miss your favorite TV show because your teacher gave you all kinds of homework. Oh, man, it's going to take all night long. And so you do all your homework, and you work, and you work, and it's boring, and you wish you were watching your favorite show, but you can't because you got to do your homework. And finally, it's dinner time. You're thinking, oh, finally, something good must happen today. And guess what? You don't like your dinner. It's gross, too. And to make things worse, the whole time you're sitting there, your sister is kicking you under the table, and no one is even getting on to her for it. She never got in trouble, and you just get so upset and so mad. And you know what? Finally, you have to go to bed early because you're on punishment for getting an F in school because you didn't take your homework with you, and you left it, and you were irresponsible, and now you're so sad because you're laying in bed, and it sounds like your whole family is having the best time ever out there, and I think they're playing your favorite game, and they're watching your favorite show now, and oh, you're just so mad because all you can think about is how terrible and awful and sad your day has been. It has been the worst day ever. Does that sound like a terrible, awful, no good day? Yeah, I would hate to have a day like that. But you know what? Some days are just bad like that. Sometimes things just go wrong. Some days are tough. In fact, for a lot of us, sometimes we have seasons full of bad days like that. Sometimes we have long periods of time full of really bad days, and it is tough. It's hard. And so today, I'm going to teach you three important things. Everyone say three. Three important things you need to know about how to handle really hard days that end up making you pretty sad. Everyone say, oh, sad. Yeah, we don't want to be sad. So we're going to talk about three things you need to know about how to handle sad, hard times. You ready? You ready? Everyone say, number one. Here's the first thing. Some days are hard. Everyone say, oh, man. Yeah, that's not very exciting to hear. Yeah, some days are hard. Whether it's like that one day I just described and all kinds of little things over and over, little small things add up and they make this terrible, awful, hard day. Or it could even be where really hard, big things happen in your life big, terrible situations that you're facing, really scary things, and maybe you have even a lot of days where you're dealing with tough stuff. Maybe your grandpa is sick, and you're really not sure if he's going to make it. Maybe your dog ran away, and you're just not sure. Is she going to come back? Is she going to be found? Maybe, maybe your parents have been fighting a lot, and you're really afraid they're going to get a divorce. Maybe you have ended up with a lot of bad grades in school, and you're really not sure if you're going to be able to catch up with all the other kids. Maybe your best friend turned their back on you. You know what? A lot of times, bad things happen in life. That's just a part of it. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. 
we're going to have tough times. But he said more to that. We're going to learn in a few minutes how to handle those hard days. See, I have good news. Even though we have hard days, even though bad times will come, even though hard times will be around, you ready? This is the second thing. Everyone say, number two. Hard times won't last forever. Everyone say, hooray. Yeah, that's great news. That's awesome. Hard times won't last forever. You know what? You may have really bad days. You may, it may seem like this hard thing you're facing is going to last forever and ever and ever, and you're never going to get through it. It might seem like there's no way out. It might seem like you have a million hard days ahead of you. But guess what? Hard times won't last forever. In fact, remember our power verse Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. Do you know what that means? That's kind of a funny thing to say, isn't it? Planting and harvesting and stuff. How many of you, like, have a garden at your house? Yeah, only a few of you, yes. So some of you, I don't have a garden, so I need help learning what this means. So here's what this means. You ready? Those who plant or pray in tears or really hard times, bad days, hard stuff, they will harvest or have a, they'll be blessed with shouts of joy. You know what that means? When you face hard times, if you call on God, if you pray, if you spend time with him, if you, if you plant in tears, which means pray and ask God to help you, then God will help you. Your hard times won't last forever because God will take care of you. And you ready for our third one? This is important. This is what will happen when you plant in tears of sorrow and sadness. You ready? You ready? Okay, I just didn't hear you. All right, number three. God can turn sadness into, what is it? Joy. That's right. God can turn sadness into joy. God can take any hard situation, and he can turn it into joy. See, It may seem like you're going through so, so much and that all these bad things are happening. It may seem like you're never, ever going to make it. It may seem like all these bad things are adding up and all this tough stuff is happening. It may may even seem like every time you turn around, something bad is happening. It may seem like... Really, really hard things every day. You have your grandpa who's sick, and that's going into your life. You've got those bad grades that happens in your life. Every day you're dealing with hard stuff. It may be that your dog is still sick or still missing, and you don't know where he is. It may be that you're dealing with this thing and that thing, and it seems like every day really hard times are going into your life. Just so much tough stuff going into your life. And you know what? When you pray, when you ask God, when you say, Lord, help me through this hard time. Lord, I need you to make it because it seems like left and right, day after day, there's all these hard things and all this bad stuff going into your life. You know what? When you ask God to help you, he can turn all of your sadness into joy. He can set you free. He can can turn all of your sadness and he can empty it out of your life and out of your heart and turn your life into one that is filled with joy. God, he has what it takes. He is powerful. He is strong. He is mighty. And no matter what you face, no matter how hard it is, no matter how big it seems, no matter how long it seems like it's going to take, God is bigger and stronger, and greater, and He can help you turn your sadness into joy. All you have to do is spend time praying and asking God, God, I can't make it on my own. I need your help, and He will help you. I want everyone to close your eyes. I want you to bow your heads. And I want to pray for those of you that maybe you're going through some really hard times right now. Maybe you are facing really tough times. Maybe things seem to be going really bad and maybe maybe you're like that example earlier and it's just a lot of really bad things and today has been a terrible, no good, awful day. Or maybe you have been facing 
a lot of really big, scary stuff. Maybe it is something like your grandpa or grandma is sick, or someone you love is not doing great, and you're afraid that they're going to die or, or that you're not, they're not going to make it. Maybe it is that your parents have been fighting a lot or someone you love is getting a divorce. Maybe it's your grades or a bully in school or maybe it's something really, really huge and it has you feeling so sad, so down, so depressed. If that's you and you are ready to trade your sadness into joy, I want you real quick to raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, we need your help. We need you to help us make it through sad and hard and difficult times. We need you. Lord, some of these boys and girls in this room watching online, they're facing really scary stuff. Lord, I pray right now that you would surround them with your presence, surround them with your peace, Lord, and that you would turn their sadness into joy. That instead of thinking about all the hard stuff all the time, instead of thinking about how bad it is, instead of always worrying about what they're going to do, instead, I pray that you would fill them with your peace, fill them with your presence, Lord, and that they would begin to have joy in knowing that you give us strength. Lord, your joy is our strength. Lord, we can make it because of you. We pray that you would help us to turn our sadness and to joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great job, boys and girls. I'm super, super proud of you. You have learned and done so well, and I, I can't wait because next week we're going to learn another super awesome lesson. We'll see you then. Yeah.